Hello, peoples. It's your boy YouTube Blue coming back at you again. Um, you gotta love free agency, right? <laughs> so, um, I think I spoke on this. The Dallas Cowboys are looking at some other players too, like Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I think they're in the. I think there are a couple other teams looking at him too. If they get Emmanuel Sanders, I would be excited because. Um, he would be a good compliment for us losing Randall Cobb. Uh, he's a slot guy, so I think that would be good there. Um, there's a lot of guys that's on this team that are still not signed yet. You look at um, Kayvon Frazier, Antoine Woods, Daniel Ross, um, Joe Looney, um, just to name a few. There's guys that are still unsigned. Um, and they haven't signed with other teams yet. So um, there's opportunity for redemption yet. So what we have done so far, you know, of the big name guys and some of the small characters that you probably didn't realize, we did re-sign Darian Thompson. He was our backup safety. He actually played good last year in spot duty um, on defense. He kind of stepped up a little bit. He shocked me. Um, there's some linebackers still on this team that need to be signed, like Justin March Lillard, Ray, uh, Ray Ray Armstrong. You probably don't even know who the hell that is. Um, and Malcolm Smith. I like Malcolm. Uh, I hope they bring back Malcolm. He was the one that was the MVP for uh, Seattle when they won the Super Bowl. Um, I hope they do bring him back because in the few games that he played for us at the end of the season, he came in there and played really good. So, um he was an old Chris Richard guy too, but um, he's a he's a good linebacker. So I think that that's a guy that they could possibly bring back. But who they did sign, um, and some of you guys probably like I don't like. I know some of you guys already said you guys don't like him, but Anthony Brown re-signed with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, he's on a three-year deal worth up to fifteen point five million. Um, that's that's a very small deal. Um, it's peanuts. For three years, 15.5 mil, if you calculate that, it's really, it's not that much. So, um, I like what they're doing with these smaller contracts because you need these guys for depth purposes. Now, just like with Byron Jones, Anthony Brown is also a guy. He did get injured um, halfway through the season, and we didn't see him, but he has been solid for the team. He's been a solid cornerback. Um, he doesn't suck. I mean, he's not the greatest, but, I mean, He's solid. So if you get a ball hawking guy in here and some other guys in the draft and maybe a good guy in free agency like Desmond Trufant, if they get him, hopefully they could get him. I don't know what the cap space is looking like right now. But um, if they could get another guy that's really good in here, Anthony Brown could definitely compliment. But for a three-year deal that's only 15.5 mil, that's not bad. That's not – I can't really harp on that too much. And um, – I didn't have an issue with Anthony Brown. Um, like I said, he came in there, he played solid. So, um, but I know there's some people out here that's never played football that watch the team and just think that everybody's supposed to be a superstar. But it doesn't work like that. No team is like that because we are in a salary cap era, and you can't have a stake on every damn plate. You got to have guys that are a compliment, a uh, hors d'oeuvre, uh, whatever, a side dish. And Anthony Brown is, he's a starter because he was last year. He was on the other side of um, Byron Jones. But now that Byron Jones is gone, you got to have somebody back there that's a vet. You know what I mean? That's been here. Um, he was our sixth-round draft pick in 2016. So, remember, he was a sixth-round draft pick. So, for him to still be a starter as a sixth-round draft pick, that's still, that's still good value that we got for his pick in 2016. So I just want to say, guys, just be grateful for what we have. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're so busy just like, oh, let's make a splash. You guys remember when the Eagles, that one year, when Chip Kelly was their uh, coach, and he just got all these Oregon Duck guys. That was when he brought um, Kiko Alonzo and all these other guys that used to be Oregon Ducks. And he just wanted to create a dream team. And that's what we thought. We thought the Eagles were going to be the shit that year. 
they didn't even bust a grape. So just because you have a team of all-stars or a team of a bunch of talented players, you still got to have the coaching staff to, to, to um, get these guys together. You still have to have a good rapport with these people because sometimes they just don't mesh together. You understand what I'm saying? So your players have to have chemistry. Your coaching staff has to be good. That's the reason why Dallas Cowboys ain't won a Super Bowl in a long time because we've had trash coaching staffs over the year. I mean, we it ain't been good since since – Jimmy Johnson era. So you, you look at it like that. I mean, I think that, and I'm hoping with Mike McCarthy and company that we can make a change. I think that what they're doing now, and Miss Jackie asked me today about that, about are we, are we, um, are we rebuilding? And I say, yes, you know, I didn't think that we were until we lost all these people, but then, you know, this new coaching staff wasn't going to tell you what their plans were. So it just looks like it, we went from just adding a couple of pieces to basically just retooling this whole team. Now, I'm not mad that we're rebuilding because look at it on the bright side, guys. A lot of what we were doing before was not working. And, and granted, we did lose some good players. And I still would love to see those players. But you got to look at it from a different standpoint. They're going to get people that they need. They did sign Gerald McCoy. So they're trying to do some different things. So let Mike McCarthy and his staff do what they do. Let's not just, you know, have a pickle about it. Let's just relax and just let it, let the chips fall where they lay. We still got the rest of free agency. There's still some good guys out there. There's still um, the draft coming up and there's some good talent in this draft. I'm talking about, Throughout the draft, third, fourth round, I've been looking at guys in the fifth round that are starters. So I'm just saying, at least we're not the Bengals guys. <laughs> I mean, we, it could be worse. Let's let's just let's not be spoiled, Cowboy fans. I understand that it's frustrating because we haven't won the title since you know the mid '90s. But you gotta you gotta just look at it for what it is and just be happy right now because I'm telling you. What we're doing now, I'm happy what we're doing. And I see and I can and I'm and I'm looking at it from a different standpoint, not from a fanboy standpoint. I can't think as a YouTuber, I cannot think as a fanboy. I allow you guys to do that. You guys could do that all day. But it's my job as a YouTuber, as a vlogger, um, to calm everything down and just think rationally about the situation because I can't just sit out here and be biased. I can't be a fanboy. I can't be a homer. I can't be none of that because I have to focus so much on the vernaculars, the 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 tidbits, the things that your average fan is not looking at. So that that's our job to do that. So um that's just where I'm at with that. Now we also did sign our kicker back, Kai Forbath. We're going to take a bath this year. You guys know when he came in <laughs> after Maharati left, um, he was 10 for 10. Didn't miss a kick for us. And actually, right now, he's out in California training and kicking. That's what I like about Kai Forbath. He's a guy that never quits. He's still kicking in the offseason and doing what he needs to do, even though like nobody's watching him and no coach is telling him to do it. He's out there doing it on his own, perfecting his kicks. And becoming more consistent. So um, they signed him for a one-year deal. Um, they could have signed him for longer than that. But I know they were looking at Greg Zerline at one point in time too. But who knows? They might still get another kicker in here for training camp. Like like another smaller guy. Which they already have one on a reserve list on the team right now. If you guys didn't know. Uh, Tristan Vittel. Whatever his last name is. Tristan V. He's actually on the team. He's been on the team since... Um, right after the season ended, they they signed him a futures contract. So he's basically there to provide, I guess, competition for Kai Forbath. But we we know that Kai Forbath is going to be the guy going forward as far as kicking the ball. So we at least have him for another year, thank God. Now, I don't know what they're going to do about punter, uh, Chris Jones. I mean, he's still on the contract, but um, maybe he was just injured and maybe he just need the offseason just to heal up and get back to his punting status. So, um, I don't know. With John Fossil, with the special teams coach, who knows what we're going to do. Um, but we need special teamers. Uh, CJ Goodwin is still not signed. I, I like him as a special teamer. Um, he, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's what you call a, um, a part-time ball hawk. Like when he does come in on defense, 
he, he's, he's an aggressive type of safety, and I like him. So they need to re-sign him, maybe Kayvon Frazier. Kayvon Frazier was one of our best defensive guys, uh, one of our best special team guys. So you got you to gotta have that as well. So you bring these guys back and just sign them for cheap deals, and let's let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Because you, you can get Kayvon and uh, C.J. Goodwin back on, on a two-year contract and, and be good, and it's not going to affect your cap space at all. But that's just all I have for that. Let me know what you guys think about uh, Anthony Brown. I know some of you guys don't like him, but this is this is the thing. Look at it like this. We got we got. You have to solidify your team. So you have to get your high price guys, and then you get your solid guys as well. You got to do both. You can't just be top heavy and then the bottom fall out. You see what I mean? You have to have something to hold on. So basically, like those those guys like Anthony Brown. They're your foundation. And then guys like Gerald McCoy and and, and Dak and, and Zeke and, and Amari, those are your bread and butter guys. Those are the top guys. So if something happens, you still got that foundation if somebody gets hurt. So you want to make sure that this is straight. Because if this ain't straight, this ain't going to be shit <laughs> if they get injured. So you just have to be on cross your T's and dot your I's. That's, that's what you got to do. So... Um, that's where I'm at with that. So, uh, thanks again, all my subscribers. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell. It's your boy, E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.